Hi, this is Sebastian, KB0TTL. Today we're going to discuss how to troubleshoot the connection for your DB Mega hotspot. All right, so we've had a few questions here about where the cables in the box go, and I'm just going to cover that here right quick. Uh, first of all, as you can see, we have our Ethernet router, and we're going to plug our Ethernet cable that's included with the DB Mega combo to our Ethernet plug in the end of the Mega. Then our power cable is going to go right here into the power connector on the side. And that's how we're going to hook it up initially. Initially, you are going to want this hooked up into your router directly using that cable, even if you're intending to use Wi-Fi later on. This is Sebastian, KB0TTL. We're just going to show you um, a few troubleshooting tips here for the DB Mega today. Uh, first, we'll go ahead and access our DB Mega through our router. Um, just using a Netgear router here business router you'll see everything we have hooked to our router here you'll see the very last entry here is a Pi Star device which is going to be your uh, DV Mega we're going to go ahead and pull up our DV Mega um, just via a web browser here as that's how we would access uh, the DV Mega okay so we are seeing the DV Mega dashboard we're going to move over to configuration the username is Pystar, and the password is Raspberry. We're going to go ahead and sign into that. Okay, so we're going to make sure that a few things are active here in the system. DMR mode needs to be turned on. Hostname's Pystar, we're going to leave that alone. That's how it comes. Your call sign. DMR ID number from RadioID.net and this will need to match the same frequency that you have in your code plug. Note that the DB Mega is a simplex device so both your transmit and receive frequency will be the same in your code plug and will need to be the same as this. Your longitude and latitude which can be found by googling your city name, city state, longitude, latitude and you can get that information offline easily. Your country. And then also your QRZ address. So my QRZ address is qrz.com forward slash dbkb0ttl. And of course everybody's is different. Uh, we need to make sure and select dual band DV Mega, DV Mega Raspberry Pi Hat GPIO dual band. Your node type would be private. If you only if only you want to be able to be the person to access uh, your DV Mega via your handheld using your DMR ID. So if you click private, only your DMR ID, a handheld program to your DV, DMR ID, will be able to access the Mega. If you click public. Other people that are in your home, say your friends come over, they want to get on your hotspot, they'll be able to use it too. It won't just be exclusive to this DMR ID or the ID that you have programmed into your radio, rather. Uh, we have our time zone. Kansas City is in the Chicago time zone. Uh, dashboard language, English. Okay, so here we have our DMR servers. This is going to be the interesting part here. So in the United States, we have 3101, 3102, and 3103. If you live closer to the midsection of the United States, like say Kansas City, Chicago, uh, someplace in Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, you're going to select 3102 region. If you're in New York City, uh, region, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, um, basically any place, um, I would say east of Detroit, you're going to go ahead and select 3101. And then say you get out west of Kansas, out in Colorado, from Colorado out to California, you're going to be 3103. Um, you may have to switch these up from time to time if one of these servers is down. These are Brandmeister servers, and there are going to be times that one of these servers is down. This number actually isn't too critical. Um, in fact, I could go to 3101 right now. I could be chalking on this all day. You go to 3103, you can be chalking on it all day. But we'll go ahead and select 3102 as it is the closest server um, to, to, to where I am. 
So these would be um, the settings that you'd probably most like to see um, in your DB Mega. Um, one thing to keep note of is the hotspot security password. Um, a hotspot security password is not required, but if you have a Brandmeister account and you log into the Brandmeister account that you've established with the Brandmeister network and you put in a password for your hotspot, then you'll also need to have that password right in here. Um, keep in mind that the DB Mega does not like complex passwords. I wouldn't put letters and numbers and uppercase and lowercase. I wouldn't put more than 10 digits in for a password. You can do it with Brandmeister, but the DV Mega does not like it. What I would do is I would stick with a short password, like four or five numbers in a row, or four or five letters in a row, all lowercase, but I really wouldn't go any more complicated than that for a password, as it's only caused trouble in the past for some reason with the DB Mega. Um, other than that, the DB Mega is a pretty reliable and well-functioning uh, system. It's better than most of the hotspots that I've seen in action, including the Zoom Spot. Um, there are a couple less expensive ones available on the market these days that don't have the audio quality, they don't have the range, and they get stuck on channels a lot easier uh, than the DB Mega does. So, um, all in all, I believe the DB Mega is the best value um, on the market today as far as hotspots are concerned. Um, just going up to dashboard here real quick, we're going to be able to, to look at a few things here. Notice how DMR and DMR net are both green. Um, that basically means that not only is your Ethernet plug plugged into your router, but your router is also able to ping out to the internet. Uh, so this is showing that you have internet connection, and it's showing that your um, DB Mega is actually capable of hooking up to the Brandmeister network here in this case. If these lights are not green, then you are not connected and there is something wrong either with the way that your router is plugged in or if you're using your Wi-Fi connection, the way the Wi-Fi connection is configured as well. There could be something wrong with your connection that is between your DB Mega and either your wireless router or your Wi-Fi router. Um, now just going back over here to configuration again, you'll have the opportunity to put in your Wi-Fi uh, credentials here by clicking configure Wi-Fi, your SSID and your password, and you would go ahead and save that. Note, in order to set this up, you are first going to have to log in by plugging your DB Mega into your router using the provided Ethernet cable. And then from there, you'll be able to program these credentials in. So yes, initially you are going to have to plug your DB Mega into an Ethernet router at some point in order to get it programmed up. But once you have Wi-Fi credentials plugged in here, uh, you'll be able to use it um, you know, via Wi-Fi as well. So that's another advantage here uh, to this particular DV Mega is that yes, it is Wi-Fi capable. Uh, some people have used it on the hotspot on their cellular phones and devices. Um, this can be good, this can be bad. Depends on the kind of data plan that you have on your cell phone. Um, a 3G connection may not be as good. A 4G connection with an unlimited data plan is really what you want um, for this type of thing, as 4G connections don't really seem to have that big of a problem uh, supporting the DB Mega. Keep in mind, you don't want a really old cell phone or you know anything like that. If you have a Samsung Galaxy S3 or an S4 or something like that, you can forget it. Um, you know, if you have an S7, an S9, something of that nature, um, then you're going to have uh, probably a pretty reasonable connection, even with that old of hardware. Uh, you just don't want the super, super old stuff, and you want a decent data plan uh, to go along with it. All right, then back up to our dashboard. Uh, what you're going to notice when we go ahead and key up, say, to the parrot, is that you're going to be able to tell that the um, DB Mega is receiving a signal from your radio. I'm going to demonstrate here on the Parrot. Yeah, the Parrot's going to repeat back to me what I say, basically, to the Parrot channel. If you hear the Parrot channel repeating back to you, then you know that you have a good connection with the Brandmeister network. So here goes. This is KB0 TTL monitoring.
I guess I initially had to key up, which sometimes you do, but sometimes you have to initially key up before it'll allow you. All right, so I'm now connected to the parrot. Let's try it again. This is KB0 TTL monitoring. And that echo is because I had another handheld in the background. Let's try it this time without the handheld. This is KB0TTL monitoring. This is KB0TTL monitoring. And notice that little echo is gone. <laughs> so that's actually decent here. Okay, so that was the parrot. Now let's go ahead and switch to a talk group. I'm going to choose Worldwide, and yes, you're probably going to hear some activity on Worldwide here. This is KB0TTL. Notice how the DV Mega has switched to Talk Group 91, um, which is worldwide. You can see a few people are kerchunking on here, uh, but there's not really any activity. And here we have somebody. Uh, yes, very good. Alpha Alpha 2 Uniform Papa, this is KB0TTL. Um, we were just checking out a hotspot here that we have hooked up here in the shop. So, um, uh, nice speaking to you. This is Sebastian, KB0TTL, and I'm in Kansas City. And as you see, we have a demonstration of another hotspot. I'm very curious to see what this gentleman has. Well, you're doing pretty well. You have pretty decent audio going out um, of your hotspot there. I'm using the DV Mega uh, dual band uh, hotspot. And I'm using a, I believe it's a Pi 3 that it's mounted to. Um, so which hotspot are you using currently? Very good. Very good. Well, thank you for the signal report. I'm going to have to cut out here, but um, it was nice speaking to you as well. This is KB0TTL. Okay, and that was an example of a well-working uh, system here. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do now, uh, just for demonstration's sake here, is I'm going to go ahead and do a talk group disconnect. 
end that is going to be talk group 4000. What talk group disconnect does is it disconnects me from the talk group that I've just keyed up and then it allows me to select the next talk group. You're going to want to use talk group 4000 each time you want to disconnect from one talk group and go to the other. Otherwise when you change otherwise when you change your receive channel you're going to be hearing the previous talk group that you were talking on even as you key up into the next one and that can be a problem. So we're going to go ahead and use talk group disconnect between each of our channels. Okay, keying up talk group 4000, which is talk group disconnect. And this is going to disconnect us from uh, talk group 91, which is worldwide. And we are disconnected from uh, talk group 91. And now if we wish, we can select another talk group. Okay, so just for demonstration here, if your hotspot is working, your DMR and DMR net icons will be green. If your hotspot is working, you'll be able to see your signal in TX here as you key up. And then it's going to say listening DMR here, of course. Um, under radio info. Notice we're uh, receiving time slot 2, so make sure your code plug has all of your uh, hotspot channels receiving in time slot 2. And color code 1. And that seems to work well as a default here for us. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This is Sebastian KB0TTL. If you liked today's video, be sure to subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube channels and 73.